So sorry, I couldn't be here, uh, could, couldn't be there. So uh, I'm Tang Han uh, from Pisa University in the UK. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a recent work where we look at uh, different forms of incentives for promoting commitment compliance and corporations. Uh, you have actually seen from Kalina uh, with a, a very similar purpose where uh, we, we try to use uh, incentives such as reward and punishment for promoting corporations in the one-shot uh, prisoner dilemma or public goods game. Uh, here, uh, the game is a little bit more complex where we look at the scenarios where uh, people can arrange pre-commitment. They can communicate in advance uh, about whether others uh, want to commit to corporate, for example, contract, or make a promise, or even make a threat uh, before the interactions. So it, it makes the uh, behavior space larger, uh, and uh, nobody has asked the questions like how incentive can be used to ensure commitment compliance and, uh, and uh, the benefit of that for the evolution of corporations. So uh, a bit of motivations. So why do we commit? Uh, I think it's probably best to look at uh, some of the quotes from this very influential book on the evolution and the capacity for commitment by Randolph Nessus. Uh, so a couple of quotes you can see here, uh, commitment is giving up option to change incentives in the situations like uh, in case of the prisoner dilemma. Yeah, so for example, there's no incentive to corporate uh, so by using commitment that uh, situation might change uh, and also individuals must consider that promises or threats uh, which are two different kinds of commitments may be fulfilled so you make a promise to a uh, corporate and the other pro oh, okay uh, maybe uh, they is it likely that uh, they are going to keep their promise uh, especially if there's some sorts of uh, incentives or some sort of enforcement or even some sorts of reputations uh, of, of certain individuals. Uh, in this work, I'm not going to talk about uh, like reputation-based commitment, but we, we have done some works on that. Uh, uh, also, commitment is alternative to having relatives and trading favors. Commitment is, you, know, you can think that uh, relationship is not always about trading favors. If you have me, I have you, but it could be something much deeper, uh, which is uh, something usually not considered in uh, the literature of evolution and game theory. Uh, and the last one, which is very interesting, special human specialized capacity to make commitments may have evolved by natural selection, as uh, stated by Randolph Nessus. And uh, our works, actually my work since my PhD have been uh, working on, on these topics for why trying to create computational models to look at different aspects of commitments, how commitments might be useful to lead to more stable corporations compared to previous uh, 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 mechanisms. Uh, you have seen, uh, we, we can see lots of uh, examples for, of commitments in the real world. The best example is marriage. You, we also see uh, people make uh, pre-agreements, uh, for example, in climate change agreement, uh, in, in fisheries where people make uh, commitment to restrain themselves from uh, overfishing. On the other hand, uh, incentives such as reward and punishment uh, have been used for example, to, uh, for, for uh, positive behavior change. Uh, it is not just about uh, uh, compliance or cooperation, but it's also about uh, encouraging people to participate in, uh, in certain agreement, for example. Uh, in, in this example uh, on pregnant women uh, and the pregnancies where we actually, in our group, we work with various hospitals in the UK to study how to design incentives to uh, encourage uh, pregnant women to stop smoking uh, under pregnancies. And here, incentives also can be used to encourage them to uh, join the commitment in the first place before actually thinking about uh, incentivizing uh, their compliance. So you see here, uh, the motivation is that 
it is important not just about uh, using incentive for compliance, but also for encouraging participation in the first place, because uh, that is where uh, you can uh, realize the benefit of, of, of having a commitment. So uh, I'm going to give a bit uh, some details about the model uh, we met. Uh, so here, uh, before the interactions, uh, you uh, can form a commitment. Players can either accept or not to commit to corporations in an interactions. And uh, there's a cost for those who uh, committed and if the commitment is formed. So the code is, for example, for used for enforcement or for maintenance of long-term commitment. And if the commitment is formed, uh, basically, uh, uh, in, in the current situations where we look at pairwise interactions, so a commitment is formed when both parties uh, agree to commit. Yeah. Uh, you, you can look at a large uh, group interactions where actually we, we look at scenario where, where the, uh, you, you need everybody to commit uh, to form an agreement. And actually, there's some interesting results on that. But uh, this is, is how the scope of this work. Uh, also, uh, where, if the commitment is not formed, uh, players also can make conditional decisions on whether to cooperate or not. And you can see that uh, given the three decision points, there are eight possible strategies uh, denoted by X, Y, Z. Uh, for example, ACC here means that the player co accept the commitment and uh, cooperate regardless of the presence of the commitment. ACD is a very important strategy which accept to commit and cooperate only if the commitment is not formed, is formed. And let's see how we model uh, incentives. Uh, assuming that uh, we have uh, a per capita budget, you, uh, ca which can be used by the institutions to uh, incentivize uh, compliance behavior. Uh, it can be used, for example, to, to reward uh, compliant behavior who uh, accept the agreement and actually cooperate if the agreement is uh, formed. So you have here two strategies, ICC that, and ICD that would receive a reward. Uh, or you can use that uh, EU uh, budget to punish uh, non-compliant behavior, IDCD uh, and, and IDC. And as uh, previously seen, uh, we think Okay, it's probably important not just to incentivize compliance, but it's also important to uh, use some of the budgets to encourage participation in the first place. So we model that by having uh, fractions of the budgets alpha uh, to uh, reward participation. So everybody who wants to participate get a reward. And uh, so you can see that there's less budgets for incentivizing uh, compliance behavior. Obviously, that is probably have less effect on encouraging compliance, but uh, uh, here uh, we, we have to ask the questions, how, whether is this, uh, there's a good balance between uh, participations and compliance uh, uh, incentivizations, which is uh, the goal uh, of this work. So uh, in this paper, uh, we have uh, done some analysis uh, of, of this model uh, for uh, the one shot presented dilemma game. We asked the questions uh, which type incentive is more effective in promoting commitment, compliance, and corporations? Uh, reward, uh, if you look here at reward and punishment of uh, compliance behavior uh, and also uh, of, of uh, participations, which is actually the second questions here. Uh, and we also look at uh, different level, different kinds of noise uh, because we, we want to test the robustness of the model. Uh, we, we check different kinds of noise and we, we see that actually one new kind of noise that emerged from uh, the introductions of commitment in the interactions, which is at the pre-commitment stage, basically uh, you say, okay, I want to promise to cooperate but by mistake, uh, I didn't make a promise. Yeah. Maybe I, you sleep, uh, you, you, you miss the time to make uh, the promise. So 
uh, that, that's the noise at the pre-commitment stage. Uh, compared to some of the previous work, the first lines of work is actually from our group, uh, where we uh, look at uh, commitment modeling. But uh, here, uh, we, we assume that commitments are regimented, and uh, uh, we uh, haven't uh, modeled uh, explicitly uh, different forms of incentives and also compensations. And another line of very relevant works is uh, the prime models of uh, voluntary participations where they look uh, both with and without incentives. Uh, the difference here is that uh, they haven't uh, considered conditional behaviors, commitment formations. So there's a very limited set of just two, three strategies of uh, unconditional strategies. And uh, of course, they haven't looked at incentives for encouraging participation. So. Uh, our work is uh, uh, one of the first ones to, to look at uh, how to balance the questions of how to balance between uh, the incentive for participation and uh, the incentive to ensure uh, compliance. Okay, to, for the analysis, we use the prisoner dilemma. You have seen uh, very good explanations from Kalina in the previous uh, talk. Uh, to, uh, so we derive uh, the payoff metrics. Uh, so here we, I, I put here two examples. The first one is the baseline one where uh, there's uh, no uh, incentives, and the second one is where you have reward. Uh, so an example here, when two ACC players interact with each other, uh, they both accept uh, the agreement, so the agreement is formed. Uh, so they both cooperate and get both get a reward from the prisoner dilemma, but they have to share uh, a course of participation. In case of reward, uh, ICC also get a full reward. And why, when ICC interact with an NCD who do not uh, commit, cooperate only if the agreement is formed and defect uh, otherwise, uh, here because uh, an agreement is not formed because only one player uh, uh, agrees, so there's no agreement. So ICC here would play C and IC and CD would play D. So that's why you see the payoff here. So for the first analysis, uh, we actually use two different methods. Uh, one method is uh, called evolutionary stable strategies. Uh, I'm not going to give uh, too much details about that. So basically the idea is uh, a, a strategy is, it is evolutionary stable. It, it can resist invasions from all other strategies in the populations. Uh, remember that we have eight strategies in our model. So basically, a strategies need to resist invasions from all other seven strategies uh, in order to be an ESS. Uh, please look at the paper later if you want to, to see the uh, more clear definitions. So here we uh, sample, randomly sample a lot of uh, games. Uh, so basically, we, we look at uh, the whole strategy space and we, we get a lot of games and we look at which game can give you uh, a, an evolutionary stable strategies in case of uh, reward and punishment. Uh, so here you can see that uh, in case of reward, there are three possible uh, evolutionary stable strategies, ICD, IDD, and NDD. And in case of punishment, uh, NCD can also be an ESS. And the most important observation here is that ACD is the only cooperative uh, ESS in the model. Uh, all the other strategies uh, would lead to uh, a populations of, of where everybody defect against each other. So ACD, uh, to remind, is the one that uh, accept to commit, so commit to cooperate, so make a promise to cooperate and cooperate if the commitment is formed basically if uh, the partner also uh, commit. Yeah. So let's. Uh, so here we, we I, I make a plot uh, for for different parameter val uh, values. So here you again is the budget of incentives. Epsilon is uh, the cost of participations. Alpha is uh, the fractions of uh, the incentive used for encouraging participations, and omega here is the level of noise at the pre-commitment stage. So the main observation is that, interestingly, you can only have ESS strategies if 
there's noise. So if noise is equal zero, which is usually assumed in many models, uh, you cannot have uh, evolutionary stable strategies. And so you can see that commitment actually can lead to stable cooperations only if uh, there's some noise. So the main reason here is that ACD can now actually invent uh, the very kind of naive strategies, the ACC, which uh, commit and cooperate regardless of whether commitment is formed or not. Yeah. That was the reason why uh, you couldn't get uh, any uh, stable cooperations. And uh, there must be sufficient budgets. So the budgets for uh, incentivizations must be greater than the cost of corporations uh, and AMPA is not too large. So you cannot have, uh, you cannot use too much of the budgets for encouraging participations. You need to use sufficient budgets for encouraging uh, compliance. So I guess I need to speed up a little bit. Uh, okay, so here's uh, where we use uh, a, a different method which is actually exactly the same method as uh, Paolo and Carlina use, which is uh, the finite population method, uh, where the advantage is that now you can look at all, all, all strategies together. Uh, with ESS, you can only uh, look at pairwise uh, analysis. Yeah. And uh, here you can see that uh, you have, can get a large uh, level of corporations for some intermediate value of uh, ANFA, which is the fractions of uh, incentive for uh, encouraging participation. So basically around 30% here. Yeah. And uh, we have shown that reward is actually better than punishment in most cases, which is very different from uh, standard models of uh, institutional incentives. Uh, yeah. So you can see here, yeah, please have a look at the paper for a little bit more detailed discussions of the results. And the last results I want to show is a noise at the pre-commitment stage can actually uh, lead to stable cooperations. The reason uh, which I mentioned previously is that uh, noise allows uh, ACD strategies to invade uh, ACC, which is uh, a, a, a kind of naive strategy which allow uh, defectors to to stay alive in the population. So by having some noise, actually that can lead to more stable corporations and higher level corporations. Okay, to conclude, uh, we have seen that reward is more efficient than punishment of promoting compli commitment compliance and evolution co cooperation. Uh, uh, I believe this is a very interesting observation because it's, uh, it's something we think that people usually use reward much more than punishment. But previous models usually show that reward and punishment are quite equivalent. They have equivalent outcomes in many models. So we show that if we look at more kind of uh, realistic settings where people usually communicate before the interactions, people usually make commitment before the interactions, then uh, we actually see that reward is much more favorable than, than punishment. And we have seen also for the first time that uh, it's very important to incentivizing participation uh, instead of just focusing on compliance. And noise can stabilize corporations. And uh, compared to previous work, uh, we believe to have uh, provided a more complete account of institutional enforcement uh, for ensuring uh, the benefits of formal and informal contracts. And uh, please uh, look at our paper uh, if you want to read uh, more in more detail, please. Thank you.